Capturing an image of a meteor shower can be pretty challenging because you need to know certain technical information, such as the right ascension and declination of the meteor shower, which will give you the location of the shower's radiant, how many meteors per hour you could expect to see at your location, the phase of the moon on a particular night, among many other things. But thankfully, PhotoPills has a tool that makes all of this very easy to figure out called the Meteor Shower Pill. And I'm going to show you how to use it right after this. Hey there, photographers, Brenda Petrella here, and welcome to another episode of PhotoPills Friday, where we unlock the power of the PhotoPills app to help you learn it without all the confusion. In this week's episode, we're going to learn how to use the meteor shower pill to plan a meteor shower image. And if you're watching this in early August, the very popular Perseids meteor shower is just around the corner. And so you can use this information to plan an image of the Perseids or any other meteor shower you wish to photograph. Let's dive right into the PhotoPills app. Okay, so from the pills menu, scroll down until you see the PhotoPills shower pill and click on it. Inside the pill, you will see a ton of information about meteor showers divided into multiple sections. There's also an icon bar at the bottom of the screen, and we'll be working from within the info icon for now, which is selected by default. In the first section at the very top of the screen gives you the current meteor shower information for your current time and location. There are arrows on either side of the box that allow you to move forward or backward in time by a full day. The next section is a scrollable section that shows you the major upcoming meteor showers for the following year and their peak dates and times. And this is scrollable, so you can scroll left and right to zoom ahead in time to look for future meteor showers. Below this is a section that lists all of the currently active showers occurring over the next month or so. And this information includes the date range of when the meteors will be visible, the peak date and time of the meteor shower, the meteors per hour, which is the rate at which you could expect to see meteors, and the phase of the moon. This section is linked to the scrollable section above, and if you click on any of the active meteor showers in the list, it will resort the list so that the selected meteor shower is now listed first. And notice that when you do this, a yellow bolt is activated next to the selected meteor shower. There is a second symbol in this section that looks like stacked blue bars, and this indicates how powerful the shower is anticipated to be that year. So for instance, I have selected the Perseids meteor shower, and it has several blue bars, meaning that it should be a pretty good shower this year. The next section shows what meteor showers are coming up, even the weak ones. The section after that shows the rise and set information for the Sun, Moon, and the Milky Way's galactic center for the dates that are listed at the very top of the screen. And since the light of the moon will wash out many of the meteors, knowing when the moon will rise is pretty important to planning your meteor shower images. Also, if you wanted to capture the Milky Way along with the meteors, then this information tells you when the galactic center of the Milky Way will rise above the horizon and when it will set, and it also shows the orientation of the Milky Way in the sky, which is also handy for planning your images. Okay, moving on. Next, you'll see a graph that tracks the path of the moon rising and setting, which is shown as a blue line, and the path of the meteor shower's radiant, rising and setting shown as a gray line and it also is indicated by a little icon that that looks like a meteor shower. The radiant of a meteor shower is the area of the sky where the meteors appear to originate. So on a good night you'll see meteors all over the sky but if you want to capture an image where it looks like the meteors are radiating out from one area in the sky then you would need to include the radiant in your composition and then combine a bunch of images into a composite image during post-processing. However, if you wanted to try to capture very long trails of the meteors, then it's best to point your camera opposite of the radiant because those meteors tend to appear longer in the sky. So knowing the radiance location and when it will rise above the horizon is important for planning your compositions. This graph is very similar to the timeline in the planner where you can scroll forward and backward in time and see how the paths of the moon and the radiant 
change over time. Also, it's important to note that the information displayed on this graph is based on whatever meteor shower is selected in the list below the graph. So if I tap on the different meteor showers, you'll see a dot appear next to the name of the meteor shower, and you'll see the information change appropriately in the graph above. Since the peak of the Perseids meteor shower is coming right up on August 11th, I'll select that one for this example. Now, if I scroll back up and look for the peak information about the Perseids meteor shower, I see that the peak night is August 11th at 11.53 p.m for my current location. If I tap on the Perseids meter shower, then it loads that information at the top and it will also load it into the moon and radiant graph that we were just looking at below. Now note this gray shaded area on the graph. This shaded area indicates the meteors per hour on a given night. Other than the weather, there are basically three things that determine how many meteors you'll see per hour on a peak night. And that is one, how high the radiant is in the sky, two, whether the moon is up, and three, the phase of the moon. So this great graph is showing how the intensity of the meteor shower in meteors per hour changes over the course of the night. So in this example, the intensity increases as the radiant gets higher in the sky, and then it dramatically drops once the moon rises above the horizon, but then the intensity continues to grow again as their radiant continues to get higher in the sky. And this information is helpful if you want to know when during the peak night you should be photographing. Now I've said that the information that is provided here in the meteor shower pill is based on your current location, but if you want to display the meteor shower information for a different location, then just tap on settings, position, and here you can enter an address or coordinates to change the location if you'd like. Okay, now let's click on the calendar icon at the very bottom of the screen. This is another way to find meteor shower information about a meteor that you might like to photograph. At the very top are different years that you can select, and below that, the meteor showers are then organized into different classes. So you've got major meteor showers, minor meteor showers, variable, and weak showers. If you click on any of these meteor showers, it will bring you to an in-depth info page on that particular shower. It provides the peak information for your current location, and it also gives you a whole bunch of other details, such as the right ascension and declination of the radiant, and a bunch of other numbers that I honestly don't fully understand, but this information is here at your fingertips should you need it for some reason. From this screen, you can then load this information into the meteor shower info panel that we were just learning about by clicking on the peak at your location tab. So if you click on that now, you are back in the info panel of the meteor shower pill and the information for that particular meteor shower is now loaded up. Now, once you've selected your shower of choice, you can then click on action at the bottom of the screen and then click send to planner. And now the peak information is loaded into the planner and the meteor map layer is automatically turned on. The meteor shower map layer can be turned on or off by scrolling the top icon bar until you get to the last icon, which is the meteor shower one. If you click it off, it will turn off the map layer. If you click it back on, it will send you to the calendar view of the meteor shower pill. So if you had started your meteor shower planning from within the planner first, this is another way to load the meteor showers information into the planner, and it's a bit simpler than going through the meteor shower pill first. So to summarize, to start with the planner first, you would just click on the meteor shower icon in the top bar, select the meteor shower you want, and it, boom, it goes back to the planner and it is loaded into the planner at your red pins location. Now you can always move the red pin by tapping on it, holding and dragging and plopping it down in another location. Or you could also load a point of interest and the meteor shower information will move with the red pin. So as an example, I'll load a point of interest that I saved that I'm interested in scouting this week, which is along the Appalachian Trail on the way to Smarts Mountain in New Hampshire. So I'll just click load, point of interest. I'll look for my point of interest, which is Lambert Ridge, Smarts Mountain. And now my red pin has been relocated to that point of interest and all of the meteor shower information came with it. Okay, now before we go any further, let's deselect any map layers that we don't need so that the map is less confusing to look at. 
really all we need is the moon information and the meteor shower information. So to activate or deactivate any map layers, just click, click on the map layers icon in the lower right of the map. And under map layers, click off the eyeball next to the map layers that you want to turn off. So I'm only going to leave on the moon and meteor shower map layers and then click done to go back. Okay, now let's review the information that's provided in a planner about the meteor shower. The top bar shows the basic summary of the selected meteor shower as we've seen before in the meteor shower pill, which includes the, the date range of the shower, the peak date and time, the meteors per hour, and the orientation and elevation of the radiant. Note that the timeline is now set for the peak date and time for the meteor shower you selected and not your current date and time. Now let's look at the map. Here you'll see the moon rise and set azimuth lines as shown by the light and dark blue lines. You'll also see a gray line and a meteor shower icon and that represents the azimuth or direction of the radiant. In addition, there is a dotted gray arced line that is the actual path of the radiant. You'll also see these concentric circles that appear to surround the red pin and these indicate the degrees in elevation in 10 degree increments from the horizon to the zenith which is the point directly above the red pin. And so you can basically think of these lines as a dome over the red pin and each line is a 10 degree elevation change from the horizon up to the zenith. And this is helpful for getting a visual for how high the radiant will be in the sky at different times of the night. So if the radiant is closer to the outer concentric circles, the radiant will be closer to the horizon. And as time goes on, the radiant moves closer to the center of those concentric circles, the higher the elevation is of the radiant. So if you scroll through the timeline below, you'll see the gray line of the ra radiant azimuth move over time, and you'll also see how the radiant moves higher in the sky along its path. You can also see how the elevation azimuth changes are reflected in the information in the top bar. If we look at the timeline, we see the radiant path, the moon path, and the shaded area that shows the intensity of the meteors per hour, as we saw in the meteor pill. Knowing the direction and elevation of the radiant and when the moon is going to rise are very helpful for planning where to point your camera and at what time during the night you should be taking images, especially if you don't wanna be up throughout the entire night and you just wanna go out for a few hours. As I said earlier, if you wanna capture multiple images to create a composite of the radiant where it looks like the meteors are all emanating from one area, then you would want to point your camera in the direction of the radiant azimuth. However, if you want to capture longer tailed meteors, then you want to aim your camera 180 degrees away from the radiant azimuth line. And that's why this line is so helpful. If you want to save this plan for later, just hit save, plan, new plan, enter a name for the plan and hit save. Also, once you are on location, it's a really good idea to use the night augmented reality feature to fine tune your composition and make sure that you are aligned with the radiant or not as you wish. It's important to calibrate the AR before you use it and I explain how to use and how to calibrate the augmented reality feature in episode 13, so be sure to check it out. Let me know if you have any questions about the meteor shower pill in the comments. Hit subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.